What can be more irresistible than a kitten? These guys might look cute now, but some of their ancestors have grown into man-eaters. We're here in a lion park in South Africa now where we can view these creatures in relative safety. But there's a reason they're known as the king of beasts. So what is it that people find so enchanting and frightening about lions? Is it their speed, their claws, their sharp teeth, or all of the above? Might also be some of the stories about man-eating lions. Like in 1898, right here in Africa, they were building a bridge over the Savo River in Kenya, and two brother lions terrorized the construction process, eating 135 workers. Did you know lions are mentioned in the Bible over a hundred times, and you can find them all the way from Genesis to Revelation. It's usually in reference to their ferocity and how dangerous they are. Of course, Samson killed a lion with his bare hands. David killed a lion. There are man-eating lions in the Bible. The way that they punish criminals was by throwing them in the lion's den. And early Christians were even fed to lions. But amazingly, as the Bible mentions not all lions are to be feared, there have been a few friendly lions in history. For example, in the 1950s, a couple, George and Margaret Westbow, who lived up at a ranch near Seattle, Washington, adopted an abandoned lion cub. They named it Little Tyke because they felt sorry for it. But they discovered as they tried to feed her, she refused to eat any meat at all. They were concerned, thinking there was no hope for this little lioness to survive, and everybody told them the same. Because we know in the wild, lions survive in almost an entirely meat diet. Then someone showed the West Bows that verse in the Bible that talks about in heaven, the animals are vegetarians, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. That encouraged them, and so they began to feed little Tyke a purely vegetarian diet. Not only did she survive, she thrived, growing into a lion that was over 352 pounds and over 10 feet long. In fact, zoologists that examined little Tyke when she was full grown said they had never seen such a perfect specimen of a lioness in their life, a pure vegetarian. You know, when we hear incredible stories about that of little Tyke, it reminds us that God's original plan was to make a world of total peace. It describes it here in the Bible in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. The wolf also will dwell with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child will lead them. Nothing is going to hurt and destroy in the new heavens and the new earth that God is going to create. Wouldn't you like to live in a kingdom where there's perfect peace, where there's no more death or killing or pain? God says that he wants you in that kingdom. The lamb of God made it possible for you to have an encounter with a lion of the tribe of Judah. Wouldn't you like to meet him today?